Hey everyone, I'm Mr. Willis, and you will love economics. Monopolies use high barriers to entry and immense market power to eliminate competition and dominate an industry. This can lead to price discrimination in the market. Price discrimination is a practice where a monopoly sells specific products to different buyers and charges each consumer the highest price that they are willing and able to pay according to their purchasing power and demand elasticity. In other words, while the firm may sell the same product to several different buyers, each individual buyer pays a different market price based entirely on their willingness and ability to pay. In order for price discrimination to be possible, three conditions must exist in the market. The first is that the firm must have monopoly power in the industry. The market conditions of a monopoly are perfect for price discrimination. A monopolist sells a completely unique product, so there are absolutely no substitute goods in the industry. Furthermore, with no other firms to turn to, consumers must buy from the monopolist in order to meet their needs and wants. This makes it possible for the firm to charge different prices based on a consumer's willingness and ability to pay. With only one firm in the market, who else is the consumer going to buy from? They may not like it, but they'll pay the price set by the price discriminator in order to satisfy their utility. A firm must also be able to segregate the market in order to price discriminate. When a monopoly segregates the market, it keeps buyers separated so it can hide information from them. In the case of price discrimination, the monopoly will sell its products in a segregated market to keep buyers from knowing that they're being charged different prices. In today's economy, a price discriminating monopoly can effectively keep a market segregated by selling its goods online. Online marketplaces make it easier to charge different prices to different buyers because it's unlikely that consumers are communicating with each other. As a result, each buyer will assume they're being charged the same price as everyone else and have no objections to paying it. Lastly, in order for price discrimination to be possible, Consumers cannot easily resell the product being sold in the market. A monopoly's ability to price discriminate is determined entirely by the firm's role as the sole supplier and price maker in the industry. Preventing buyers from reselling goods maintains those roles. If consumers had the ability to buy a good and then resell it to another consumer at a different price, it would undercut the monopoly's control over market output and undermine the firm's ability to charge different prices to different consumers. As a result, the products sold by a price discriminator usually have restrictions in place that prevent resale or transfer of ownership after purchase. So what motivates a monopoly to price discriminate? Well, for one thing, price discrimination increases the economic profits earned by the firm. A pure monopoly produces a limited output and charges a single market price to all consumers. Buyers who are willing and able to pay that price can purchase economic goods to meet their needs and wants, while those who can't afford the monopoly price are priced out of the market and left with unsatisfied utility. Some buyers actually pay less than they are willing and able to pay, leading to consumer surplus in the market. By comparison, a price discriminating monopoly will produce a greater quantity of output and will charge different prices to different consumers. The price discriminator segregates buyers and then charges the highest price that each individual consumer is willing and able to pay at every quantity demanded in the market. The buyers who are willing and able to pay higher prices will be charged more, while the buyers who are only willing and able to pay lower prices will be charged less. Because everyone is paying their buyer's maximum price, no one saves money in their transaction with the firm. As a result, consumer surplus in the market is eliminated, and any surplus that would have existed 
is captured by the price discriminator in the form of economic profit. Price discrimination also makes the firm allocatively efficient. Remember that for a pure monopolist, the marginal revenue of each additional unit sold is less than the price per unit at every quantity demanded. This means that marginal revenue is less than demand at every output level. Using the optimal output rule, the monopolist will set its profit maximizing level of output where the marginal revenue of the last unit produced equals its marginal cost, causing the monopoly to under allocate its resources, under produce its output, and leading the monopolist to be allocatively inefficient. By contrast, because the price discriminator can charge consumers the highest price they are willing and able to pay, the marginal revenue earned from each additional unit sold is equal to the price charged at every quantity demanded. This means that marginal revenue equals demand at every output level for the price discriminator. Compare the cost and revenue data for a pure monopoly to that of a price discriminating firm. Remember that a monopolist will charge all consumers the same market price, but must reduce its price level in order to sell greater quantities of output. This leads the marginal revenue gained from each additional unit sold to be less than the price of the product at each quantity demanded. By contrast, a price discriminating monopoly can charge each consumer their buyer's maximum price, based entirely on demand elasticity and consumer purchasing power. After segregating the market, the firm will charge the first consumer their buyer's maximum of $8, increasing the firm's total revenue to $8. The price discriminator will then charge the second consumer their buyer's maximum of $7, increasing the firm's total revenue to $15. When the third, fourth, and fifth consumers pay their own buyer's maximum of $6, $5, and $4, the firm's total revenue increases to $21, $26, and $30 respectively. Notice that the marginal revenue gained from each unit equals the buyer's maximum price paid by each individual consumer. When plotting the marginal revenue earned by the firm when each additional unit is sold, it will be identical to the price per unit at each quantity demanded. As a result, the firm's marginal revenue curve and demand curve will be identical representing that demand equals marginal revenue equals price for the price discriminating firm. And like all other firms, a price discriminator will use the optimal output rule to produce a profit maximizing level of output. Because marginal revenue equals demand for a price discriminator, the firm will maximize profits by producing a quantity where demand equals marginal cost. A price discriminator will continue to produce its output and charge individual consumers the highest price they are willing and able to pay until the price of the last unit sold equals the marginal cost of production. This is the point where marginal revenue equals marginal cost for the firm. From here, it's no longer profitable for the firm to continue production because the marginal revenue of the next unit sold is less than the marginal cost to produce it. As a result, the firm has reached its profit maximization point and is now producing the socially optimal level of output. At this point, because the price discriminator is producing where price equals marginal cost, it's producing an allocatively efficient quantity of output. A great example of price discrimination in the real world can be found in the airline industry. Think about it. Airlines hold monopoly power on routes to certain destinations at certain times of the day. For example, if I wanted a direct flight from Los Angeles to London and I wanted to leave in the afternoon, Virgin Atlantic is the only carrier that provides that flight option. In this sense, Virgin Atlantic holds a monopoly on afternoon flights that travel nonstop from LA to London. As a result, Virgin has the ability to determine the quantity of seats it will provide and has the power to set a price for each passenger. These market conditions are perfect for price discrimination. So how do they do it? Easy. First, Virgin segregates the market by selling non-refundable tickets online using a customer's name and proof of ID 
making it impossible to resell a seat to another passenger. The firm then asks passengers where they are leaving from, where they are going, how long they will be gone, and how many people are traveling in the passenger's party. By asking these questions, Virgin is gauging whether the passenger is flying for business or pleasure. If the party includes one or two passengers, and the duration of the trip is only one or two days, Virgin can assume that the trip is for business, meaning that the customer's demand for the tickets is more inelastic. They have to be in London on those days and therefore are willing to pay more per seat. Traveling with a larger party for a longer period of time implies that the passenger is going on vacation and therefore has a more flexible schedule and a more elastic demand. Vacation travelers can reschedule their trips or search other airlines if tickets are too expensive. So Virgin can't charge those passengers as much as they would charge business travelers, and therefore it offers them lower prices. Once the flight takes off, each passenger sits in the same space, breathing the same air, and receives the exact same travel time as the person next to them. Yet, despite receiving the exact same service, each passenger on the plane paid a different price for their seat. Next time you're on a plane, ask a person next to you what they paid for their ticket. There's a good chance they paid a higher or a lower price than you did, depending entirely on when they booked the flight, the size of the party they're traveling with, and whether or not they're flying for business or pleasure. That is price discrimination. And that's price discrimination. Be sure to subscribe to the channel by hitting the red button below so you can receive alerts about new videos when they become available. If you enjoy the channel or find my videos useful, let me know by liking the video and feel free to leave a comment below. We have full video lectures on every topic in macro and microeconomics, as well as quick macro and micro minute videos for cram sessions and quick reviews. If you'd like to learn more, you can click here for my micro minute video on comparing pure monopolies and price discriminators, or you can click here for my video on regulating monopolies. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time on You Will Love Economics.